On Sunday, Greeks will go to the polls to vote on whether to accept or reject the latest austerity measures coming from the Troika. The latest proposals would see even more privatisation and cuts, which have already had a devastating impact on Greek living standards. To discuss this, we are delighted to be joined by Yorgas Golgos, a Greek dock worker and a union leader from the port of Piraeus. This has been a key battleground against privatisation and he is also a member of the Syriza party that is now in government. Thank you for joining us, Yorgas. Could you give us a brief update on the mood on the streets of Athens, uh, of Greece, as we go ahead to Sunday's referendum? Yes, first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, your time and uh, the opportunity you give us to uh, show our uh, uh, view on uh, the problem we face now in uh, in Greece, in Athens. Uh, yes, the situation is uh, completely new for us and for the new elected government. And also it's uh, something unique uh, that the institutions are facing uh, nowadays because uh, government decided to listen to the voice of uh, Greek people. And it's obvious by, by their... Uh, attitude so far and their reactions after the announcement of the referendum that uh, they don't want to listen to our voice and uh, Greek people do not want to continue the austerity measures and uh, we think that uh, the majority will vote not to go on with the proposal of uh, the institutions because it continues the same recipe of austerity, privatization and the deterioration of uh, Greek economy. And on both sides, are there, how is the mobilization? Um, the left have held a big demonstration, and I saw yesterday there was a large demonstration from the right wing. How do you feel the, mob, the campaign is going in on behalf of the left? Uh, I think it's going uh, fine. We have uh, limited time to take uh, these initiatives. It was uh, also something uh, new for us when we heard the uh, Prime Minister to announce the referendum. So we had uh, less than a week to uh, to make all these preparations and uh, the point is that uh, people are uh, ready to say no to austerity. And uh, the system, and uh, also assisted by the mass media that uh, are here in Greece, uh, they are trying to change uh, the opinion of Greek people. Uh, it's a big problem that the banks are not open and we have a limited uh, amount of money that we can take from uh, ATMs. But uh, people uh, react in this uh, very calm and uh, cool, waiting in the queues so as to take this uh, 60 euros per day, which in total it's uh, in a monthly base it's uh, more than uh, the average uh, salary in uh, Greece, I have to tell you. Uh, the more problem uh, there is with uh, the pensioners who do not have the uh, card, so as the debit card, so as to take money from ATM. And today we had uh, longer queues in the banks waiting to open the cashiers and uh, take money from uh, their pensions. Uh, we don't want to continue this uh, kind of uh, projects and plans followed by austerity and all these measures that we faced the last uh, five years and made uh, uh, worse the situation for, for Greek uh, economy and for Greek uh, people. And obviously Greece is at the centre of an international battle for or against austerity. It seems that there are lots of foreign leaders, Angela Merkel and others, are intervening into your debate in, inside Greece. What impact is that having on the Greek population that its external forces intervening into your own democratic process? Yes. Uh, people have understood that uh, this intervention is not uh, for the positive for ourselves. They are trying to intervene and to change uh, the decision of uh, Greek people. And they will try hard to do this. And they are keeping on uh, taking all the uh, necessary and uh, undemocratic uh, measures so as to change uh, the opinion of uh, Greek people. The point is for European leaders to understand that uh, the Greek crisis is not uh, a Greek one, it's a European one. And uh, now it's not anymore a financial crisis only. 
it's also a democratic crisis. Uh, it's uh, something unacceptable for us that uh, European leaders uh, do not want to hear the voice of uh, Greek people uh, asking for uh, solidarity, asking for measures that are not going to to give, uh, how to say, the final uh, strike on Greek people. We want uh, some time and some space so as to breathe and recover and try to solve our problems by ourselves. Uh, unfortunately, the last uh, 35 years, 40 years almost, uh, Greek politicians they were very much connected with uh, people who were uh, strong and uh, they had uh, been very powerful in politics, in economy, in everywhere. So, politics the last 40 years uh, were uh, interconnected uh, with uh, very strong uh, financial interests. And this is the main problem of uh, Greek economy. Uh, Greek, so Greek society decided uh, in the last elections to, to change pace, to change page, to, to leave behind all this. And uh, European leaders has to listen to our uh, request so as to give, to give some space and time and to solve these problems and to try to find uh, a solution within the European Union in a democratic uh, way. And can I ask you about the media within Greece? Is there, is there fairness and balance within in, in the media or is the media attached to these powerful interests that you've just been describing? Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, the Greek mass media, they are quite biased and attached to the directions uh, by the European leaders. Uh, they are trying to, to impose uh, the yes opinion to Greek people and uh, to vote so in the next uh, referendum of uh, next Sunday, in the 5th of uh, July. Uh, I think uh, Greek people will uh, react accordingly and... Uh, they will vote for no, because uh, all this pressure, all this uh, news that are especially from the uh, private uh, mass media, they are too biased and uh, we are fed up with this story. And you're very optimistic that the population will say no to the latest austerity measures. What do you think I will come next? Uh, I hear to my relatives, I hear to my colleagues saying that uh, enough is enough and we cannot go on with this. We don't... Uh, we want to be part of European Union, but we have to uh, be as uh, European citizens to uh, save our uh, sovereignty, our... Uh, uh, how to say... to live uh, decently the next years. Uh, and this uh, will happen only if we say no to this uh, referendum. We cannot uh, afford any more austerity measures like this imposed the last uh, five years. And I'm optimistic because I hear people around me. I don't watch the TV news. And if, if Greeks vote no, what do you think will happen next? Greek government uh, asked uh, from Greek people to say no to, this, uh, to the last uh, proposal by Europeans. And they ask this uh, because they want to continue the negotiations with uh, European institutions and uh, IMF. Uh, the point is uh, to find a viable and uh, sustainable solution about the national debt. This is the first thing. Some measures we know that uh, they have to be imposed so as to comply with the previous program and uh, the next one. But uh, without any solution with national debt, there is, there is uh, no opportunity to, to do this. So we are asking for uh, further time for negotiation to stop uh, using uh, these measures of, uh, for example, stopping the liquidity to the country, which uh, leads to this suffocation of uh, Greek economy. And the last attempt was the, uh, the, closer, the closing of uh, the banking uh, system. So we don't want to to continue European leaders with these decisions and to sit on a table and uh, discuss sincerely about uh, the financial problem. And could you say a little bit about what Syriza has done or what has happened since the new government came to power to fight off um, privatizations, both in your own industry and in wider industries? Yes. Uh, 
this government, even uh, before the elections, uh, they didn't want to continue privatization uh, program and they declared that uh, they will stop privatizations. When uh, we had the first uh, declarations inside the Greek uh, parliament, they also repeated this uh, commitment and we were very happy for this because privatizations, especially in uh, fields like, in sectors like uh, ports, in Greek airports, uh, they're very crucial for Greek economy and generally for any economy because we're talking about uh, privatization of infrastructure, of unique infrastructure that was created by Greek people. So uh, it's not, for example, like uh, privatizing a public uh, factory of uh, making shoes, for example. And uh, there is a possibility always after some time, some years, to build up next to the privatized one public one again. We're talking about a unique infrastructure that is something that it cannot be created from the beginning. Uh, Paris Port Authority, for example, it's an organization, a public organization, profitable one for the last 80 years. So privatizing this port, the bigger port of Greece, it's a matter of so sovereignty. It's not just privatizing a company. Um. Finally, what role do you believe that international solidarity, the solidarity we're seeing from Spain, from Britain and from the rest of the world, what role do you think that plays in the struggle that the Greek people are undertaking? First of all, it's encouraging uh, for Greek people. It's very important to see European people to resist to such a neoliberal uh, and very dogmatic uh, decisions. So it's very encouraging for ourselves, every 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 Greek people. At the other, on the other side, uh, it's very encouraging for for Greek government because uh, this is the point. Uh, it's uh, the day and the point that uh, people have to speak. It's not on uh, the decision on uh, on some leaders that are. Uh, uh, especially like uh, the German one, who are uh, a completely neoliberal uh, di direction. The point is uh, European people to speak, to show solidarity and to go on in a common European way together. Thank you very much for joining us, Jorgas. Thank you.